Well, our thanks as always to Home Street Bank for their support of this podcast. If if you're looking for a bank that has it all, great people, great service, great rates, this is the place for you. This is my letter of choice. It should be yours as well. Go to homestreetbank.com. It's your one-stop shop for all your banking needs, both business and personal. That's homestreetbank.com. Can an introvert be great in sales? Actually, your introversion might just be your greatest sales advantage. Let's get into that today on The Buyer's Mind. Welcome to The Buyer's Mind, where we take a closer look deep inside your customer's decision-making mechanism to reverse engineer the perfect sales presentation. Now, please welcome your host, Jeff Shore. Well, welcome, everyone, once again to The Buyer's Mind. I'm your host, Jeff Shore, and we take this opportunity really to look inside our customer's mind and get to know them so well that that sale begins to roll out right in front of us. We really are interested in the way that salespeople sell, but here in The Buyer's Mind, we're far more interested in the way that buyers by because when we understand that, then we can reverse engineer the sales presentation to make it easy for them to do so. And I'm going to confess right from the very beginning, I am an introvert. Okay. Now, let me explain and define that just a little bit, because sometimes when I tell people that, it surprises them. They hear me on the podcast, they see me on the stage, and I may not look like an introvert, but in fact, I am. I am an introvert. What does that mean? It, it The difference between an introvert and an extrovert really comes to where they get their energy. Is their energy resource uh, internal or external? So I have a lot of people that I know in my life, people that I love dearly, and they get their energy from the people around them. Introverts tend to get their energy a little bit more internally. So certainly while I love uh, presenting, I, I, I love working with sales professionals and sales managers, by the time I'm done with a speech, oh boy, I, I, I want to hole up. I want to sneak off to a corner somewhere. And that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of that. In fact, I would suggest that that made me a good salesperson because I carried empathy skills uh, that, that helped me uh, in my introversion to connect more with customers. Uh, joined, as always, by our show producer, Paul Murphy. So, um, Murph, how do you read yourself here? Introvert, extrovert? Well, I'd, you know, we talked about it with Daniel Pink, and I, I would tend to say that I am kind of a bit of an ambivert. Uh, I, I think mm -hmm. sometimes I, I draw energy from crowds with people, um, and there are other times where I'm a wallflower, and I just want to, you know, get alone and, and get some energy just by being quiet. Sure. Yeah, I think there's a little of that in all of us uh, to, to some extent. There's no question about it. And uh, it, we'll, we'll try and get into that today uh, with our guest, Matthew Pollard, to try and get a sense of how that how that works. But what I want to focus today on what you need to do as a sales professional, regardless of your personality style, it's going to come down to just one rule. And that is this. Don't make it about you. As long as your presentation is about you, either because you're outgoing and gregarious and excited and it's the me, me, me show, or you're insecure and closed off because you're worried about how you're going to feel, either way, you're making it about you. So just focus on two things. One, your buyer, always a theme here on the buyer's mind, and two, the process. If you're focusing first on your buyer and then on the process to make it easy for them to buy, and you get those things right, everything else falls into place. So let me give you our uh, quote of the day. I'll actually offer you two along these lines, specifically for introverts. If you're an introvert, you're going to love these quotes. The first one is uh, by Ellen Burstyn, and only introverts are going to get this. Here's what she says. What a lovely surprise to discover how unlonely being alone can be. What a great quote. What a lovely surprise to discover how unlonely being alone can be. And another a great quote from uh, Gandhi, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. And that's really true for introverts. Introverts can shake the world. It just might be in a more gentle way. Now, before we get to our interview, let me give you your sales tip. It ain't about you. Introvert or extrovert, get out of the way. And here's how. When you are talking to a customer in those first two to five minutes, just keep this mantra in mind. No solving and no selling. 
It's only about connecting and understanding. Do not solve and do not sell. All you're trying to do is connect relationally with this customer and understand who they are. If you take the time to do this right, it takes you out of the picture. It's focused specifically and directly on the customer. It's only about understanding. No solving and no selling. Just think about that in your next presentation for the first few minutes. All right. Well, uh, this is going to be fun. I I'm really looking forward to talking to our guest, Matthew Pollard. Uh, he is the author of The Introvert's Edge. Uh, he's known as the rapid growth guy, consultant, speaker, blogger, author, uh, serial entrepreneur. And now he can add to his resume guest on The Buyer's Mind. Please welcome Matthew Pollard. Matthew, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, let's have some fun. Uh, so I, I want to go all the way back to the beginning of your sales days because you state that one time you got 92 rejections in one day. Now, maybe that wasn't your sales days. Maybe that was your dating days. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> how does one do that? 92 rejections in one day. You know, it's funny that you say that synergy. I think it feels the same. It does, uh, doesn't it? Rejected. Yeah. It doesn't matter how it happens. I think right. Brian Tracy talks about the same mm -hmm. thing, that it's like getting spanked as a child. There's <laughs> nothing worse. So, yeah, for me, it was kind of happenstance. I mean, I, I got into sales because I really took a year off school. I mean, I had a reading speed of a sixth grader in late high school. No idea what I wanted to do with my life and convinced my family that I was going to do a job for a year. Mm -hmm. And I didn't take a job in door-to-door -door sales. I mean, I took a job in real estate working in the back office doing data entry. Mm -hmm. About three weeks after I'd started, my boss had came up to me and said, Matt, I got some bad news. You're out of a job. The company's going broke. And I had to find a job really quickly. And in Australia, we take nearly a month off at Christmas. We go away on the 20th of December and come back on the 15th to 20th of January. Mm -hmm. So the only job that I could get is commission only sales. And, you know, there's a saying in sales in commission only, especially throw mud against the wall and see what sticks, mm -hmm. which sounds like a cool saying until you realize you're the mud. So after, <laughs> well, it was, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. So about five days after pro of product training, I get thrown on this, this road and I went to walk into a business and realize no one actually taught me how to sell. I had no idea what I was going to say. Right. And you know, my father broke his back for 80 hours a week trying to support the family. There was no way I was just going to walk away. So I walked into the first door and I got rejected and, you know, I got told to get a real job and I got sworn at and, you know, people can be lovely sometimes, sure. especially around Christmas right. uh, when everyone's trying to go away for a month. And yeah, it was, it was 90, 92 doors of rejection before mm -hmm. I made my first sale on the, the 93rd door. And mm -hmm. I still remember I made about $70 and I was ecstatic for about 45 seconds until I made that realization. I got to do this again tomorrow and right. every day for the rest of the week. It was really not okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So, so how did the, how did you get through that? I mean, that's you, you ever, the, the the typical salesperson is not going to be able to face 92 rejections a day. So how did you get through that? Well, for me, it was funny because I had a reading speed of a sixth grader in late high school. There was no way I could pick up a, you know, one of the common books like a Brian Tracy or a Zig Ziglar and, mm -hmm. and read the book and then apply it. It would have taken me three months to read the book, let alone apply mm -hmm. the theory. So for me, it was actually around that time that YouTube started to become popular. Yeah. And you know, f surprising to me, and I'm sure a lot of people, there's a lot more there than just cat videos. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, I, I, I think this happens to a lot of people when their backs against the wall, they have to make decisions they wouldn't normally make. And for me, I had to believe that sales was a process like any other, because if I didn't, then it would have been a really hard year. Mm -hmm. So I focused on that sales was a system and every day I focused on a different element of the system, a different element of the process. And day by day, it went down to 72 doors, to 48 doors, to, to 30 doors, to 12 doors. And you know, it was funny, about six weeks later, my boss pulled me into the office and he goes, Matt, I, I have to admit I'm surprised, but I just got back the report and you're the, you're the number one salesperson in a company that just happened to be the largest sales and marketing company in the Southern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So it took six weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think the important thing for people to know is that, you know, they spend six years, seven years getting degree qualified to, to go out and, and do their chosen profession because, and they believe that it's possible because they have this understanding that it's a learnable skill. Mm -hmm. For some reason, this whole thing around sales, people have this belief that they have to have the gift of the gab, it's a natural ability. Right. And because of that, they they don't put in the effort, they just go and do it off the cuff. And I think that the only tr difference with what 
what I did was believed it was a system and focused on every step down the process. And it really doesn't take that long to master sales mm-hmm. as long as you make the agreement with yourself that you're going to spend time learning it as a process. Who were some of your early instructors, mentors? You said you spent a lot of time at video, you were watching YouTube. Who, who did you follow early on? What's funny is I actually, I, I was a big fan of Zig Ziglar's methodology back then and Brian Tracy's. And what's what's interesting is I actually really gravitated to Zig Ziglar's methodology back then and also a couple of other people, but Zig Ziglar especially, I found out I interviewed Tom Ziglar, uh, Zig Ziglar's son mm-hmm. on my podcast, The Introvert's Edge, only about a month ago. And I was surprised to find out that Zig was actually an introvert himself. Hmm. So it's funny that I gravitated to this. And one of the things that I always try and talk to is that if you're going to get advice from someone, especially as an introvert, you want to get advice from someone that actually understands what it's like, because right. as an extrovert, they're just going to say, well, just go out. It's, right. it's easy to do this. Sure. And it's, it's not for us. Like the simple nature of developing rapport is one of those things that we need to use story to overcome where an extrovert just has this outgoing charismatic personality. And it's, it's so yeah, years later, I found out that he was an introvert, but I did use other people like Cohen Ray was another one. He was an Australian Mm -hmm. as a person that focused on sales. And, and then obviously Brian Tracy, I think some of his stuff's exceptional. Sure. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, I think to the average person listening right now, they would hear this conversation. They would say, sorry, dude is not an introvert, right? You don't sound like an introvert, which causes me to say that we probably don't understand introversion and extroversion particularly well. So give us a little context, a little background, a little definition as to what it is that makes you an introvert. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the best way to define it is, well, firstly, introverts and extroverts can both do amazingly in everything. All of them have disadvantages and advantages. Now, for me, I define introversion as one simple thing which is I can do a podcast like this. I can go and speak on stage and everybody will say, Matt, you're an absolute extrovert. The difference is at the end of doing that, I want to go down and I want to go and lay down in a dark room for a period of time. Mm -hmm. We're an extrovert. And Jim Cathcart, who writes for Top Sales World magazine, I know that you know him well. He and I spoke on small business festivals, a a conference that I founded a couple of years ago. It's listed by Inc. as the number three in America for small business. Mm -hmm. And he and I spoke on that stage. I introduced Jim. And the difference was at the end of that presentation or the end of that day, he wanted to go out and party on Rainy Street and see all the bands, I wanted to go home. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the biggest factors that most introverts don't understand. They have this perception or this stigma, if you like, that they can't do these behaviors. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's sales, whether it's networking, whether it's presentation skills, an introvert just has to learn the skills. If you look at someone like Jamie Masters, who's the number three podcaster in America for entrepreneurs as rated by Inc. and Entrepreneur, she highly introverted, surprised me. I actually said that she was an extrovert. I projected that on her and she said, Matt, I'm actually an introvert. Ivan Meisner, another person who he's the founder of BNI, the largest networking group in the world. And he found out only a few years ago when he did the test, he's actually an introvert. What he did was gravitate across to a systematic process, which is why he founded BNI, so that there could be a systematic way in which he networked. So what you'll find the major difference, it, it has nothing to do with whether you can succeed or fail in presentation skills, in networking, in sales, or parenting, or you know, dating or whatever. The difference is that while an extrovert has advantages where they can go out and they can just naturally do these things, perhaps they need education on things like active listening and empathy. An introvert, on the other hand, needs a system to get started, but then they have that stuff in spades. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone like me to do a presentation like this or to do an interview like this, a lot of the things that I'm talking about is things that I've practiced before. Because if I get on a podcast like this and somebody asks me a question that I'm not expecting, then a lot of times there's a little, you know, I've got to really think about what I'm saying. Now, having done over a hundred of these on some of the biggest podcasts in the world, I've practiced what I do completely. So it's very uncommon where a question will come up where I can't synthesize at least a few things that I've already said in the past. But for my first ones, if we go back to those, I'm ums, ahs. In my first podcast, I had to cut all my ums and your nose out. It took me 20 minutes to edit a podcast that took me 10 minutes to record. 
Why do do you think introverts actually can make great salespeople? Because we we tend to think of salespeople and this image in our mind is what we see projected. But again, it doesn't get down. We don't see the energy management or sort of where we get our energy from outside sources or from inside sources. Uh, what is what is the advantage that an in, that an introvert has uh, in the sales arena? Definitely. So an extrovert, well, let's talk about extroverts and how they develop their sales ability first. Mm -hmm. So they focus on their charismatic personality type. So because of that, they have skyrocketing sales. They have a bad phone call with a customer, a fight with a spouse, a parent, a, a friend, and their sales will plummet sometimes for days, weeks, or months. On the flip side, an introvert really doesn't do well at sales at the start, but once they've learned a system, they take out the ups and downs out of the process. So the best analogy I can give you is if you look at a handcrafted vehicle, sometimes the, the, the car is, it works out really well, other times it doesn't. While Henry Ford created the production line and every single day it just pumps out vehicles that are within you know, one standard deviation from the norm, they always come out perfect. Mm -hmm. So while an extrovert has an advantage at the start because they rely on their personality, but still has the ups and downs, an introvert removes all the variability because they just focus on a process. Now that process, just like in science, you can experiment with different things and improve that process. But day in, day out, I mean, I spoke at uh, Electrolux in Bangkok in front of 150 vice presidents, spent the entire day and the night before hanging out with them and entertaining. And I was exhausted. I got back on a plane. I flew all the way back to uh, Chapel Hill, well, Austin back then where I used to live. Mm -hmm. And I then did a whole day of sales calls laying in bed with my eyes closed because I was jet lagged and I was exhausted and my sales didn't really fluctuate that much. An extrovert potentially would have been really struggling that day because it was linked to their, their charismatic personality. Mm -hmm. So that's really the major difference. Once an introvert learns a process, they'll beat an extrovert hands down, not on a daily basis, but over a longer period of time. And an extrovert, if they will learn this process, they would still be able to do extremely well. But an introvert with the process, following the process, will beat the variability of an extrovert every day, well, every month, mm -hmm. pretty easily. Sure. Uh, Daniel Pink, we had uh, Daniel Pink on the show, and uh, you know he wrote the book To Sell as Human, and he talks about this idea of a third category. There's extroverts, there are introverts, and then there are ambiverts or um and and i i would actually add a a fourth category for people like you and i matthew who are uh, introverts uh, by character but situational extroverts so is there a gray space in between the two categories i actually think the gray space is the ambivert itself mm -hmm. because i think that a lot of extroverts will learn things they spend a lot of time focusing on active listening and emotional intelligence and because of that they actually become more thought out and they start to gravitate more to the ambivert field on the flip side an introvert who starts to become a situational extrovert it's not that they they draw the energy. I think that's the major thing. Where do you draw your energy mm -hmm, from? Mm -hmm. For me, when I do a podcast interview like this, I come up as a situational extrovert. When I went networking with Jamie Masters, you know, she thought I was an extrovert. I thought she was an extrovert. In truth, we just had strategies and we both ran different strategies, but we ran them successfully. And at the end, we weren't as discharged or as you know, terrified as we would have been without that strategy, but we were still both excited to leave and go and recharge afterwards. So I think that the, the definition of ambivert is, especially for an introvert, is that I have learned strategies to be successful in those fields mm -hmm. because the questions around defining whether or not you're an ambivert or an extrovert or an introvert is do you enjoy these kind of behaviors? Well, for me now, I actually really quite enjoy doing inter interviews like this. It doesn't mean I don't need to do something quiet afterwards but I actually really do enjoy them. I do enjoy networking now once I get past that initial thing where I'm talking to the first person and I really quite enjoy presenting from stage while it gives me anxiety at the start, I really enjoy after the event and once I'm up on stage and I start to see people's eyes open. So I think that I would now, if I did the test again, I might come up as an ambivert, but in truth, I'm 100% an extra, sorry, an introvert that has learned those behaviors and strategies to be able to participate and enjoy 
those activities. You know, it's interesting. I I, I gave a speech last month. It was uh, uh, it, it was a, a great uh, time. I, I had so much fun, like you. Always a little nervous before I get started, but then once you're up there uh, on the stage, it's great. And I, and I like it and actually to a sales professional who's you know working through trying to land the sale. And and so the the speech ended and uh, it got a very nice standing ovation. People were very warm, very gracious, and came up to me afterwards. And it was great. And it was a tremendous rush. It gave me a, comp- a, a wonderful rush of energy. But then, like you, by the time I got to the airport, you know, I my headphones come on, my cap comes down literally over my eyes. I'll tell people on a plane I have a very important nap to take uh, because I'm, I'm just absolutely done. And, and I, I guess it's not unlike a salesperson who, who lands the sale and feels really good about it uh, when they are in that moment of performance, if you will. Uh, but then, they just need to sort of uh, find that time, that that uh, alone time. I definitely agree. I mean, you've got. I mean, having stamina and adrenaline rushes has got nothing to do with whether you're introverted or extroverted. I, I think that for me, because I'm terrified about speaking on stage a lot of the times, I agree with you. I have this massive adrenaline rush before I go on, and the only thing I have to watch out for is that I have this tendency to speak quicker when I'm nervous. So I have to concentrate on my speech pattern to make sure that I'm not speaking too quickly. But outside that, the adrenaline rush makes me more in the room. Uh, Brian Smith, the founder of Ugg Boots, the the big Australian Mm -hmm. sheepskin boots company, Mm -hmm. When he speaks from stage, one of the things that he found is, and I I do the exact same thing, which is when I get up on stage, you know, I've learned that if I talk about facts and details, then I start to gloss over them quickly and I speak faster, but also I feel like I'm not making that connection with the audience. But when I share personal stories or stories of my clients, which is exactly what Brian Smith did, and it's funny, he got uh, speech coaching from an extroverted speech coach and found that it didn't stick. But as soon as he gravitated to stories, and as soon as I gravitated to stories, all of a sudden we got told by people that we were really great at speaking and that we were so engaging and how could we possibly be introverted given the fact that we were able to do that in the room. Mm-hmm. And, but, but then, you know, after the presentation, I just, I just did a presentation of book people for my big uh, book launch in Austin. And while the whole room was full of people that I absolutely love to hang out with at the end of that presentation, because there'd been so much energy exerted, I went and sat down with a couple of people, but I was, I left, excuse myself. And I went to bed about an hour and a half later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, that sounds like me. Do you think that there's a, a link here between either uh, introversion or extroversion and confidence, or, or would you say no, 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 no? The the, the confidence uh, can be there in the in the same amounts regardless of whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Is there any connection here? I actually think that confidence is a huge issue for introverts at the start. However, I see it with extroverts all the time as well. I keep hearing that was a lucky sale, or I got lucky today. The word luck tends to get applied a lot more to extroverted sales. Now, for me, an introvert that has a system, it stops becoming about them. It stops becoming this feeling of did I perform or did I not perform? It's just did the process work and did I deliver the process correctly? So I actually think that an extrovert at at the start has an advantage because they are more confident naturally about having a, a sales encounter, though their confidence can get shaken when they have a, you know, a bad couple of days of sales or, or, or a thing that happens with a canceling customer that shakes their confidence. And then that has a massive effect on their ability to sell. While an introvert has a huge threshold to get that confidence up because to get over that, they've got to understand sales as a system. They've got to learn all the steps in the process. They've got to get their stories down pat so they can develop that rapport. Because stories have an amazing effect. With there's you know study out of Princeton, if I was to tell you a story, the story creates a natural resonance. So I don't have to try and figure out how to create it for myself. And introverts have to do all of these things. Once they get to the point where they've nailed all of that, then I would say an introvert with a sales process has a much higher level of confidence in the sales process than their extroverted counterparts. Mm -hmm. Do do you think introverts are generally better storytellers than extroverts? I think that the introvert is a lot more, they have a lot more empathy. 
And as a byproduct of that, they firstly, they because they listen better, they know what stories to tell, but also they're not speaking this, they will speak a little bit slower and they'll actually make sure that the story attaches to the specific individual they're speaking to. So I believe that an introvert has a much better ability to, dev- uh, to deliver a moral of a story than extrovert does and make sure that it really resonates with the user, uh, with the listener. And I think, you know, stories, I mean, the reason why I, I really focus on stories, especially for introverts is, you know, we've all been to those sales uh, presentations where people just tell you all the features of the product. And then common day theory talks about teaching the benefits of the product. But if you tell a story of a person that was just like them that experienced the product, maybe they had an objection at the start, similar to the person you're speaking to, and then how they still decided to trust you. And now they're so happy to have received this service or product because they've now had this specific benefit. I mean, you can disagree with the facts and the details that I've told you and your logical mind processes that your emotional mind actually gets engaged when a story is told. It actually short circuits the logical mind Mm -hmm. and people retain 22 times more information when embedded into a story as opposed to just facts and detail. So if I'm in a sales opportunity and there are 10 other people coming in, I know they're going to be talking in facts and detail. And if I tell my story, I'm going to be at least twice as much of my information is going to be remembered than the other nine people put together. Mm -hmm. But also it's developed that rapport with the listener and I know that that person is believed and trusted everything I've said, because you can't disagree with that person's experience while you can disagree with the facts and details. And I think that an, an, an introvert armed with that really does kind of have a bit of a superpower in, in the sales uh, arena because they deliver those stories so, so well and come across so trustworthy delivering them. You know, a, a, a few years back, I wrote a book on uh, essentially on sales discomfort, on the idea that our desire for comfort uh, really holds us back and prevents us from from uh, being as accomplished as we can be. If we could, if we could uh, learn how to program our brains to uh, lean into our discomfort, then that's where the real rewards uh, are found. Do you think that introverts have a a greater or lesser tendency uh, towards responding to their discomfort than extroverts? So introverts have a habit of being more internalized or are more internalized than their extroverted counterparts. So I, I believe that they probably do lean in more to their discomfort. But on the flip side, if you think about it, extroverts just have different discomforts. Mm-hmm. So when you think about the sales scenario, The reason why, and you know, right from a long way, a long time ago, when I realized I could be a great introverted salesperson, I started hiring predominantly introverts because one of the things that I noticed is that sales variability was massive with, with extroverts and I'd focus on teaching them the system, but they'd always gravitate back to wanting to introduce their, their personality and change things because they wanted, they, they were excited about the fact that they, of their experience in the room and, and the magic that they could provide while an introvert would always gravitate to that system. So I could deliver predictable results with my team. But the other thing was that introverts would always be great at doing the paperwork, be great at taking notes and be really great at making sure we delivered exactly what was promised. While an extrovert leans away from that discomfort and that pain, because they don't want to be in the office doing paperwork. They want to call the next client. They want to jump to the next deal. So I always found that what they jumped away from was the thing that led to higher cancellations while an introvert actually loved doing that stuff. So once I got them over the sales process, then they then gravitated to doing all of the back end stuff to make sure that the pro that, that what was promised was delivered really well. So I think we all move away from what makes us uncomfortable. I think that the, the introverts get a bad rap because they move away from things that create us discomfort at, that are a little bit more noticeable than what the extroverts move away from. Mm-hmm. We're just about out of time. Let me just ask you about uh, you, uh, Matthew, about your life and about just a little bit of life uh, philosophy here, because uh, you have really become uh, quite the adventurer. You're the, you know, I, I one of my informal life mottos is that life is a buffet and I want to die full. And I have a feeling that you would probably relate to that. Uh, what is it about 
that is it just a personality thing? Is it a lesson that you learned where you said, I'm not going to go back to living the, the, you know, the, 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 the cushy life. I want to be out there. I want to be, uh, I want to be bold. I want to live the bold life. Tell us just a little about your, your life philosophy as it relates trying to live life to the full. Definitely. I, th I think a lot of people, when something gets hard, they just stop. I think because of the upbringing, I, I kind of had this saying that, you know, the adversities in life see the success of our futures. And for me, having a reading speed of a sixth grader in the world just not working for me and managing to push through and seeing the benefit of that hard work. And, and then the same thing happening with sales where I should have given up probably, I pushed through and as a byproduct of that, the success that I had by teaching other introverts and my, the success of my new book really has you know really highlighted the fact that putting in hard work absolutely works. Now, for me, I, you're right, I, I've kind of gone through the place. I mean, I've been responsible for five multi-million dollar businesses before I turned 30, but mm -hmm. then I made the decision to take a year off and, I, and to travel. And then I moved to the US and built an online brand and, and that's been hugely successful. But what it's been is making sure that everything that I do is actually a real decision that I made. Moving from business to business, it was really in the search of what made me truly happy. The real factor for me is I really like to test my boundaries. I really like to be pushing myself. I have this saying that you decide every moment of every day who you are and what you believe in. You get a second chance every second. Now, that doesn't mean you change your religion every, every second, but what it does mean is you need to be constantly assessing. I see people, they go five years and they're like, oh, I'm not happy. and I haven't been happy for three years. Well, why didn't you notice three years ago? So I think that the for me, being self-aware of what I'm feeling, where I'm at, and what I would consider my next challenge is so, so important. I've got a, a podcast that I, uh, episode on my Better Business Coach podcast, which I call Forget About Goals, Why is the Key to Success? And what I find is a lot of people inherit their goals from their mother, their father, their drunk roommate they had in college, and they don't really think things through. And more importantly, they don't align them with their passion and purpose of what really drives them. And because of that, there's a lackluster level of energy that goes into achieving, obtaining anything. I found that by getting that right made me really directional on achieving what I wanted to achieve. And because of that, success just comes to me. For a lot of people, because that alignment is wrong, in NLP, we learn we're presented with 2 million bits of information. Our brain only processes 126. So it's fair to assume that we're just missing those opportunities right there in front of us unless we've got that absolute laser focus. Last question, if uh, for our salespeople who are listening, suppose a salesperson who's listening right now is an extrovert dealing with an introvert buyer. Any advice uh, for how you work with people who are on the opposite side of the fence? Definitely. So extroverts naturally like to use their charismatic personality, and sometimes it can come across as bulldoggy. Mm -hmm. Introverts hate to be sold to. They hate pressure. They hate specials. They hate discounts. What they want to be able to do is make a reasoned, well thought out decision. Now, if you keep telling them all the reasons for why they should make a decision, that engages their logical mind and they're probably going to swap those decisions, uh, those logical reasons away or want to go away to consider them. The amount of time selling to an introverted buyer by telling them a story and really making sure that I've asked great questions at the start, listen to the responses and then making sure that my story really highlights elements and making sure they've understood throughout that story that I'm telling them because of the things that they said up, up front when I was asking questions, I find that people will say to me afterwards, you know, my wife and I made a decision that we were not going to sign anything today. And just somehow we ended up just nodding at each other and we just went forward. And the answer to doing that is really the ability of not pressuring the customer, making sure there is no pressure whatsoever, but telling them a nice relaxed story that then naturally progresses to what you would consider a trial close where you ask them a very soft question to make sure they are going in the right direction. And then just assuming the sale. With introverts, they don't want to be asked, do you want to move forward? Introverts, if everything checks out and you don't ask them that really terrifying question, they will just gen generally start to move forward and continue the deal. But if you ask them the question, you've then allowed them to go back to that logical mindset. And that logical mindset a lot of times will lead to a, I want to think about it response. They may still go with it, but it will lead to that response. 
Fantastic. Great stuff. Uh, really, really enjoyed the conversation. And if you're listening right now and you want more, and I don't know why you wouldn't, uh, I, I've got an opportunity here for you. Go over to theintrovertsedge.com, theintrovertsedge.com, and you're going to see there the opportunity to download the first chapter for free. And not only that, but there's all kinds of bonuses that Matthew is uh, offering. Uh, it, it's, it's great stuff when you buy the book. Uh, you'll see it right there. So go to the introvertsedge.com. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes uh, as well. Um, Matthew, a, a fascinating conversation. Uh, I really, really en enjoyed it. Thanks for being on the show. I'm hey, very happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, Murph, it's always interesting to me because I, I know my own tendencies. I know that I am at heart uh, an introvert, um, maybe an ambervert. Uh, if you listen to Daniel Pink, uh, I think you and I share that characteristic, yes? Yeah, you know, there are times I get energized by being mm -hmm. around people. And then there are times where it's like, just let, let me be alone with a book and uh, sit in a chair quietly because that's where my energy comes back. But, you know, what's interesting to me is that I, I, at the risk of sounding arrogant, I was a very, very good salesperson. I was very effective. I, I, I you know, I, I won the awards. I made the money. I did all that stuff. Uh, and I think most people today would say, well, yeah, I mean, look at his personality. He's outgoing. Well, what they're seeing is on the podcast or the stage or whatever it is, uh, I actually think I was a better salesperson because I am an introvert. Uh, I, was, uh, I was able to uh, draw people out and... And, uh, and and gave them a comfort level. And I'm assuming that that's the way you feel, Murph, when you're uh, working with a salesperson, with you being an introvert yourself, that that salesperson who allows you to be you is going to make all the difference in the world. Well, and he talked about it, too, and that it's giving uh, an introvert like myself that opportunity to think about things, you know, um, and, and not necessarily coming in with a, a super hard close, but maybe that a little bit more of a soft approach sometimes works well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I love that Matthew brought up uh, repeatedly, and uh, listen, when an expert brings something up repeatedly, you should probably pay attention to it, and was the idea that he kept going back to the idea of, do you have a system? Do you have a process? Do you know it? Have you studied your craft? And I don't care if you're listening right now, if you're an introvert or an extrovert, you have to ask yourself the question, have you studied your craft, and do you continue to study your craft? Because the whole concept of the quote, natural born salesperson is something that I flat out reject. You may have things about your personality that make you um, uh, more equipped to be a uh, to be successful in sales. You might have a healthy dose of achievement drive, very important. You might carry a lot of positive energy, very important. But ultimately, uh, those things are wasted if you are not constantly investing in studying your system and making sure that you've got that system uh, absolutely down. In other words, uh, just looking from what Matthew uh, Pollard had to say. There's a lot of hard work that goes into being consistently great in sales. And I just want to encourage everybody who's listening, regardless of what personality type you have, or even if you're not really sure whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, uh, when you take that time to be able to build your process and to study extremely hard and to practice relentlessly, the end result of that is confidence. This is something we talk about on the buyer's mind all the time, that confidence is that intersection of belief and mastery. When I believe very, very strongly in something and I have mastered the way in which I do it, the end result to that is confidence. And the beautiful thing here is that confidence is contagious. You need to have enough confidence for you and for your customer. So the moral of the story is, regardless of your personality type, work hard, study hard hard. Really know your craft. And by the time you're done, let that be what carries you through. Now, uh, being an interviewer myself, I'm going to go take a nap. Well, there you go. Another episode of The Buyer's Mind. If you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you subscribe to that. would really appreciate that. Leave a review if you wouldn't mind, too. But that's another wrap on our podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. You can find everything you need at jeffshore.com. But until next time, my friends, go out there and change someone's world. Thank you.